I call upon governors to allow our churches and places of worship to open right now. If there's any question, they're going to have to call me. But they're not going to be successful in that call. These are places that hold our society together and keep our people united. The people are demanding to go to church and synagogue, to go to their mosque. Many millions of Americans embrace worship as an essential part, essential part of life. Ministers, pastors, rabbis, imams, and other faith leaders will make sure that their congregations are safe as they gather and pray. I know them well. They love their congregations. They love their people. They don't want anything bad to happen to them or to anybody. The governors need to do the right thing and allow these very important, essential part places of faith to open right now for this weekend. If they don't do it, I will override the governors. In America, we need more prayer, not less. Thank you very much. My immediate reply was, this is, the president means well, and, um, uh, and he's approaching it from the standpoint of fairness, and that's good. There are elements in our society that are against the church. And we understand that. Uh, and, uh, and this sounds like a good speech and in favor of the church. But all pastors I'm talking primarily to Christians. I don't know what Muslims think. <clears throat> uh, I am more familiar with my Jewish brethren or friends. I am a friend of Israel. Uh, and, um, and so this, this sounds good. Matter of fairness, uh, the president is doing what um, he feels uh, he needs to do. Uh, but my point to you, my dear friend, is that <clears throat> you must understand, my pastor brethren, that President Trump is a politician. God does not want you to get caught up with politics. And God does not want you to be a pawn in the hands of politicians. And so many pastors have been pawns in the hands of charismatic politicians. might think that Obama was charismatic, but Trump has them beat as far as charisma is concerned. <clears throat> president Trump is the only president, only politician I know that can make doctors squirm and say things they know they ought not to say. But some people are really taken up by uh, these um, charismatic individuals. Sad to say many pastors have been sucked into that down through the years, and that's the reason why we're in the mess we're in. And 
So the president is doing the best he knows how to do. Um, but the pastors know better than the president regarding this matter. They know that the church is under judgment. Not the world. Not the government. Not, not the uh, uh, secular or community. government is under this uh, plague judgment in the sense that the government supported by so-called Christian leaders in the church have sanctioned homosexuality across the board and homosexual marriage and the homosexual agenda. And therein lies God loves us so much that he will stop us from destroying ourselves and he will stop the devil from using even church folks and politicians from turning his world upside down on his head, on its head, you know. Because the Bible is very clear. God in the beginning made male and female. Adam and Eve. All right, Adam and Steve. And until pastors surrounding these presidents, President Obama and President Trump, make it very clear to them that they need to overturn this demonic foolishness, even all the way to the Supreme Court, you changed everything else, Mr. Trump. Change this. This is the this is the crown, sad to say, in President Obama's legacy. This is the biggest thing he did. He changed America by causing America on the government level to sanction the homosexual agenda homosexuality, the abomination of homosexuality, the abomination of homosexual marriage, and homosexuals adopting children. And God is, um, is um, not pleased with many sins in the church and in the government, such as adultery and as well. But this right here is what I believe, along with those things, he is really upset about. And until you overturn that, this plague is not going anywhere. And with that said, here's how I reply to what the president said yesterday. And quite honestly and quite fairly, without even hearing everything, because I was preaching when the news was on. I didn't even know he was having a conference or a news conference. But I, I just sensed immediately what he was doing. And I'm praying and hoping that pastors would be wise as serpents and harmless as doves, particularly in the light, uh, in light of the fact that hundreds Church folks have died already, and hundreds more are sick right now from meeting at church. On Monday, I, I, I will give you uh, in detail how outbreaks have happened through church. Uh, on Monday, if the Lord tarries his coming, What I'm basically telling you is don't be foolish, pastors, people. Don't be foolish. Because many have died already from church conduct, from the coronavirus. And, and 
here's what I said in Black Christian News 1.com, bcn1.com. Pastors need to pray to God and ask God about reopening their church. They need to follow the Lord's leadership. And true pastors know how to do that. And I'm not too worried about the truly God-called pastor opening up tomorrow. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about it because I think they're smarter than that. And I think they, they know what the president is doing. He's a politician. trying to get him to, to carry him over the finish line. And I'll just tell you up front, people, and I know you don't like it. Some of you folks, some of you listening to me, you're not going to like it. I can tell you up front, I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat, I'm not an Independent. I don't even vote. I don't mean, I'm not even bothered. I don't even bother myself with this mess. But I would rather see Trump become president get reelected than Biden. Because I'm for I'm I'm against the homosexual agenda and he's a part of that. He's the one who helped push Barack Obama around. I'm again and, and, and sad to say Trump is too. Trump is not doing any better. But they're more blatant with it. But not only that, I'm against abortion. Many other things that are, that uh, Biden has done, and plus, after what Biden did yesterday, that's proof positive that uh, the former vice president is not ready for prime time. He, he's just not mentally ready for prime time. And and one of the things you learn in life is that you don't ever give anybody a stick to beat you with, and vice. Former Vice President Biden gave Trump a bat to beat him upside the head with yesterday. And, and, and trust me when I tell you that President Trump is going to take that bat, and they've already started, and beat the daylights out of him, along with all the other bats and little bats and sticks that Biden has given him. He's not mentally ready for prime time. And President Trump is going to demolish him in any kind of debate. But my point is, pastors need to pray, seek God's face, and God's will, and ask God about reopening their church. And trust God's leadership and follow God's leadership, not the president. Or else they will have the blood of the saints on their hands. And I said, remember, because this plague is against the church. Contrary to what you think, even you Christian people, this is a plague against the church because of our sin. See, we're responsible for Obama doing the foolishness he did. The so-called Christian leaders did a wink job and acquiesce and bow down to his charisma and his, that thing that these people have over people. He played the Christian community like a piano, just like Trump is doing the same. I'll do this for you, and I'll do this, and uh, I'll do that, and I'll, I'll keep them off your back, but I'm going to go ahead and do this. Okay, now you understand what I'm doing? You want to back me? Come on now. I need you, evangelicals. I need you, National Baptists. I need you. This plague is against the church first and foremost. God is not dealing with sinners and secular people. He 
He's not even dealing with the homosexuals this time. He's dealing with Christians who are splitting denominations over the issue and the abomination of homosexuality. Oh, we haven't heard much about the split between the Methodists, uh, the, uh, uh, the factions in the Methodist denomination, and the creeping up of, of the issue in the Southern Baptist Convention, and the down low silence in the National Baptist Convention, and, is, and, and the charismatic community is rife with this foolishness. The gospel singing community uh, is filled with it. The choir box is filled with homosexuals and lesbians. And so we have people in the church already who, they're for it. And we have pastors who are trying to change the Bible and trying to do away with the Old Testament. We got one preacher out of Atlanta Andy Stanley talking about uh, uh, unhitch. We, the church needs to unhitch ourselves from the Old Testament, which is insane and ridiculous. That's impossible. We couldn't do that if we wanted to. You wouldn't even understand the New Testament without the Old Testament. But he's doing that as one scholar said, his hermeneutic is to change the mind of the church on homosexuality. Being tapped by Obama and his gang to do so. I don't know how much money he's been paid to do that. I don't know if he's been paid or not. But you got to, you got to be doing something to, to, to try to make people believe in stuff you know they're not going to believe in. Remember now, the plague is against so-called Christian leaders, so-called preachers, so-called pastors, rebellious, stubborn Christian families who are not only filled with divorce, but also who make up the church and are secretly for homosexual marriage and lesbianism. In fact, we got some in the pulpit. We got men and women who are homosexuals, who are lesbians in the pulpit in churches. Married and living together, so-called married, which is nothing. It's like an idol is nothing. Like the Bible says that an idol is nothing. Their homosexual marriage is nothing in the sight of God. It is absolutely nothing. But the great America, we have been successful because of God Almighty and Jesus Christ. In God we trust is on our money. And we have forsaken God. So President Trump does not know any better. Pastor Robert Jeffress knows this better. So does Pastor Jack Graham. So does Franklin Graham. So does Harry Jackson. They know what's going on. And they need to tell him so. And what they need to do is tell him that you turn this thing over that Obama did when he started. You need to finish it and not continue it. It doesn't matter whether your daughter wants you to do it or not, your son-in-law, your mentor who is dead, who died of AIDS, likes it or not, you need to turn this, you need to overturn this foolishness in this government. Harder and faster than you're dealing with the abortion issue. Or we walk. You can't, you will not have our support. is against rebellious and stubborn presidents and governments who have sanctioned abomination. So you need to ask some other pastors, also pastors, 
call some of the pastors who have 180 members who are sick or 99 members, 90, 92 members who are sick. Priests and pastors have died from the coronavirus plague. And you need to call them and check with them and see what they say to you. I'm going to tell you what they're going to tell you. Call the Baptist Church out of Ringo, California. Uh, Ringo, Georgia, rather. Ask him. Because he's not opening it. You can go ahead on and try. And, and let's not be ridiculous, people. You have a huge auditorium. and You're going to have 25 people. You're going to let 25 people in? See, and, 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 and Pastor Robert Jeffress, and I think uh, even the president mentioned yesterday that, you know, these governors are deeming massage parlors and tattoo shops and hair salons central and more important than the church. They're, they're, they're not doing that. Don't lie on the people. They're not doing that. It's just It just so happens that if you have a business that's getting ready to go under and it is a barbershop, you got to go and be touched. At a barbershop, at a massage parlor, at a salon, at a tattoo shop. You just have to be, you have to be touched in that business. Well, the church does not have to do that. We don't have to touch anybody. And we ought to be worshiping in spirit and in truth. And I guarantee, and, 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 and Pastor Jeffress, Jeffress, Robert Jeffress knows this. The president does not know this. That the church, the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ is doing just fine. Now those churches that were disobedient to God and rebellious and stubborn and uh, letting homosexual members in and uh, the pastor had a side piece, the wife, the pastor's wife had a side piece and she's a low-down lesbian, he's a low-down homosexual, and all kinds of foolishness like that going on in the church. They don't need to come back online. This is against the church. God is, is, is blowing out their candle. Don't, you can't keep stuff going that God is through with. Now, some of these churches are going out of business because that's what they are, a business. They were in business and not in the ministry. Let them go. Over half of the churches should not even come back online. And we ought to thank God for, and those churches that are true churches, they are thriving, man. They are reaching more people with the gospel. More people are getting saved. They are blessing people's hearts by giving people food and, and, and paying bills. And, and, and they, they go, they're doing quite well. They're doing better. They're doing better. And we all know, Pastor Jeffers knows this on Fox News. Bless his heart. President Trump does not know this. That the church is not the building. Never has been about the building. Never in the history of the church has the church been about the building. That's something man-made. that we created, and that we love, and that we love to see filled up. But I tell you, I, can, I guarantee you, the church is marching on stronger now than ever. Well, let me put it this way. In the last 30, 40 years, because this, this right here makes you get real, real quick. This will make you pray. Folks are praying. Families are getting back together. Preachers, watch this. Preachers are preaching every day, sometimes twice a day. Are you kidding me? We don't need the building right now. We don't need to be getting together for what? So people can stop dropping, start dropping dead. Have you lost your righteous mind? Don't you go out there. Listen to me. Don't listen to these crazy pastors who probably don't even know God. 
They just want you there so they can get your little IRS check and get some money from you. They And they know how to get it. That's what they specialize in. If your pastor is asking you to meet at a church somewhere, he doesn't care for you. When he can preach the socks off you. Right from his house. The true saints will show up. God's people will show up, buddy. You don't need to have have them to come to the church so you can count heads. That's crazy, people. Don't do that. When you see people in the church dying all around, it's a different situation. And just like I don't want to be bothered going into my favorite restaurant and got to stand in there like this, wait six feet behind somebody else, got a mask on my face. How am I going to eat with a mask on? That's ridiculous. I'm going to show enough, get some spaghetti sauce on the mask. That's going to make me look ugly. Uh, what? Are you kidding me? The waiter, he, he has a mask on. We don't know where he's been. He's got gloves on. We don't know where the gloves been. Then they're going to give me some plastic utensils, one, two sets. Are you kidding me? A throwaway menu. I don't want to be bothered with that. The meal is not worth it. Y'all getting ready to make me cuss. I don't want to cuss. But heck, I can make that at how at the house, man. Well, why would you want to bring the people out into the plague? Christian people are supposed to be smarter than that. We have wisdom. We have good sense. <clears throat> Lost devilish people, they want to go out and prove they a man or somebody. Uh, 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 and want to go to the bar? Let them go. Want to go to the, get a tattoo? Go ahead. Have, are you kidding me? Christian people talking about doing stuff like this? You, I, I got to go get my hair done. You ain't going nowhere. Where are you going? Out into the plague? Nobody's looking at you. Nobody's thinking about you. And nobody's thinking about getting with you in the play, girl. Are you kidding me? And we want to, we pastors, preachers of the gospel, want to risk not only the lives of the saints, but to risk the financial wholeness of the church. Because if somebody dies under your watch, they're going to sue the daylights out of you. Don't be stupid, pastors. You let a family, half of them in the church, half out, let the, and the, their sweet mama who loved Jesus, their sweet mama who loved God, their sweet mama who sacrificed her social security money to uh, 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 give money to you, pastor, and to the church to help build the church up. She go out there because she loves Jesus and she believes you, pastor. She believes what you say as the man of God. She's going to come on out there, 72 years old, and she's going to die of a, uh, uh, she's going to die of the coronavirus disease. And she would never want to sue you. But her son will. He, he, don't care. He, he, he never cared about the church or you. They are going to sue your socks off. Or they're going to die trying. But they're going to get some money. Because you knew better than that. When you, when you don't have to do it. When you have a greater crowd online, and you can have them every day, their pastors preach them to more people now every day than they've ever preached in their lives. And the true man of God who's called by God to preach, they don't need a crowd, man. I've seen some preachers, Dr. Tony Evans, I've seen some preachers, Dr. T.D. Jakes, Fat shucking the corn more now and better now than they have in years. On fire. I, 
I mean, the fire is shut up in their bones. They can't help themselves in an empty crowd, an empty auditorium. One church out in California, I think they had a million people to come one Sunday or something to that effect. A million people get saved. Either one is great, but get, uh, a million people getting saved is better. You can't do that in your little building. I've been telling some of you churches, you need to sell some of these little campus buildings. Sell them not while you can. Go ahead and sell them to the city. That's who you want to impress anyway. Sell them to the city. You don't need all them buildings. All, and they're not going to, people are not going back online with that. 40% of your church, made up of introverts, they're going to stay home from now on anyway because they love it. They love the intimacy of it. Let me finish. I got some other things I got to take care of. One of them is rest. Another thing is eat. I've already preached twice today. The governors and city officials, in my opinion, generally speaking, yes, there are some out there. Yes, there's some devils in, in Politics, you know that. That's no secret. In my humble opinion, generally speaking, governors and mayors have issued these orders not because they hate the church. They're not. They have not really been against the church. They are. They just know that, and from looking at all the preachers who have died. All of the pastors who have died. All, I, I said the pastors are dying. What are you talking about? The people in the church are dying. Or they have the coronavirus disease. And they just know how the church is and how close-knit and so forth. And, and many of them, they're members of the church themselves, for, maybe for political reasons, some of them. Some really love the Lord themselves. And they know they have friends and neighbors in the church. They're not against the church. No, no, no smart politician is going to be against the church. You can't win without the church. Why would they be against the church? Why would they be against the, the church meeting? They're against it for one smart reason. People are dying. Now, I pray for the president every day. Thousands of people listen to me pray for the president every day. I'm not mad at the president. The president just does not understand. The president does not know the full story here. But the pastors do. And you're going to end up being seen as a criminal and a murderer by telling the people to go and, and, and gather your whole congregation together. And like I said earlier, Black people are smarter than that. And they, from what they have seen, they they know that they can serve the Lord from the house, and they will. As far as they're going at this point, is the grocery store. That's it. They might go over somebody's house and get their hair done and their nails done. Well, that's going to be. They might do that. That's it. And you know I need a haircut and a shave. And I'm not going, Danny B is not going anywhere because I love you. I'm, I'm ready to die. I'm, I'm fine with death, but I don't want to go this route. Do you hear me, people? So be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. And stay home. And I'm telling you, even if your pastor tells you to go to some church meeting, do not go. Be smart. Pastor, you can catch me on Zoom. I'm right here, live and in person on Zoom. And I'm not going out there. You don't know what these people have. You don't know what your pastor has. Don't be foolish. 
they these politicians are against people dying and they don't want another outbreak in their city or in their state. And it has been proven that it will come through the church. Thousands have died already through the church. Why? Because this plague is against the church, my beloved. If it wasn't, we would be protected. Stop thinking and stop lying that we're the innocent little puppies here, the innocent little kittens. Everybody is against us. No, we're, we're guilty. And all the pastors who are hearing me, they know it. We are guilty. We're not being persecuted. What? What? What are you talking about? This wrath, this judgment, this plague is against pastors. Pastors' wives who have robbed the church living in a big fine house on Pork Chop Hill, sucking the church dry with their prosperity, prosperity gospel foolishness. Three and four cars and a Bentley while the people in the church are starving. That's why what you need to be doing is selling some buildings, selling some furniture, Selling your house, your mansion, selling your three or four cars that you don't need. And you need to move into a double wide or at least a, a, a ranch house with three bedrooms and a, a bath and a half. And give all the money back to the people right now who got to go stand out in the $10,000 10, car line. Or sit in a $10,000 car line or stand in some food line not knowing whether or not they're going to have a place to stay here shortly. Depending completely on the big G-O-V when they ought to be depending upon the big G-O-D and you ought to be leading them to do so. Some of you preachers, we haven't heard from you since the plague. You have not preached the message because you can't preach unless there's some money involved. You hypocrite. You need to sit down and your church needs to close. So the truth of the matter is, my dear friend, contrary to this little pumped up, fake little thing that folks are doing like the churches are being under persecution. Are you kidding me? Don't be stupid, man. Don't be stupid. The church is not being persecuted. Here's the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is that there is no telling how many Christian lives have been saved by secular governors and mayors issuing shutdown orders. There's no telling how many thousands of lives have been saved. You must understand our government, uh, they're ministers too. And God gives them understanding and wisdom. God probably used the gov a secular governor that you don't agree with, a Democrat governor. That's right, to save your hide. What? Yes, that's right, that's right. That's, that's what government is supposed to do, protect the people. And these, these, even these secular governors have enough sense. Even President Trump had enough sense to shut the churches down at the beginning. If a massage parlor wants to open back up and have people stand out in line and wait into the heat and all that foolishness, and mask wearing and gloves and all that, let them do that. But the church does not have to do that because we worship in spirit and in truth anyway. And the true Christians are going to be at church on Sunday, but not at the church building. That's unnecessary. And we all know it. The true Christians are having the time of their life right now. Not at the church building, but at the house. With the pastor. And some singing. In their pajamas.
and they feel closer to the pastor now than ever before. At the church, you can't even touch the pastor. He's got his little armor bearer devils around him. <laughs> you can't even get to the pastor. Now we got the we got the pastor in his house. He's just casual. He's 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 sharing the word from his house. So what are we to do? Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, "If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves." and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. You mark my word, you're going to hear from a major pastor who's going to tell you, tell the world one day, we're going to sell our buildings, and we're going to keep the church like this. We're going back to the house. You mark my word. Twitter has already done it. Twitter told their workers, Y'all stay home forever. Uh, Zuckerberg said it yesterday. He got cut off, but he said it. He, he, he can envision half of their people staying home from now on. Why not the church? It's growing by leaps and bounds. The true church is growing by leaps and bounds. So what are we to do? What Jesus said, Revelation 2, chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. You mark my words, over half the churches are in the process of being removed by God. The candlestick is being blown out. You don't need, you just want people to come out there to give you some money. They don't have any money, sir, ma'am. You need to give them some money. You need to give all their money back. They need it. You ought to set families up for the rest of the year because they're going to need it, buddy. And I've tried to tell you, Uncle Sam means well, but they, they're not going to keep doing that. Until, unless somebody changes the game. So it's time for us to pray, see God's face, turn from our wicked ways, humble ourselves before God, and get back to Jesus Christ, our first love. That's New Testament revival. Go to church, but don't go to church. Don't go down to the building. Don't be trying to group up with people. Don't be foolish. Be wise and keep on living. God wants you to keep on living so that once you repent and get your heart right, uh, so that you can witness to the lost people all around him like he wanted you to do in the first place. Let's all stand for prayer. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you and we thank you for our time, our short time together today. We're not doing all that we normally do. And right now, Lord, if there's someone among us not saved, open their blinded eyes, unstop their deaf ears, and save their soul. The true Christians listening to me, they understand exactly what I'm talking about. Every last one of them, whether they agree or not, Lord, but a person who is not saved, they will. So I pray that, that you would help them to understand the gospel so that they can be saved today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> you may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're with us today and you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, Jesus Christ said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Please understand, my dear friend, that you are a sinner 
I'm sure that you would agree with that. That you have sinned, you have messed up, you have made mistakes, you have failed in life. We all have. The Bible says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. From the Pope on down, from Joel Osteen on down, from the Dalai Lama on down, we all have sinned against God. And we all have done evil. The wages of sin is death. Our bodies will go to a grave one day. And our souls will go to hell if we have never trusted Christ as Savior. And so, dear friend, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou you shalt be saved. Are you willing to do that today? I hope so. And if you're willing to trust Christ, to believe in your heart that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins and for mine, and he was buried, and he rose from the dead on the third day early one Sunday morning, pray and ask him to save you. For the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Follow me in prayer. Repeat after me, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have done evil in your sight. I have broken your Ten Commandments. To name just a few, Lord, I have lied before. I've stolen things before. I have lusted in my heart after people and things before. I have dishonored and disobeyed and disrespected my parents before. I have disrespected you by taking your holy name in vain. God, please have mercy and grace upon my soul. For I know that I'm guilty and I know that I deserve to go to eternal death in that awful place called hell. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe <clears throat> with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I believe Jesus Christ died for my sins, was buried, and rose from the dead early one Sunday morning by your power. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my wretched soul. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of all of my sins past. Help me to turn from my evil life and to follow you, Lord Jesus, in the new life. For it is in your name I pray. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, and you prayed that prayer with me, and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, the Holy Bible, you are now saved from hell, and you're on your way to heaven. Not based upon how you feel, or I feel, or what you think, or what I think, based upon the Word of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So 
dear friend, welcome to the family of God. I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and accepting him into your heart and into your spirit as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my article, read my pamphlet, click on the button, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer. Lord willing, if the Lord tarries his coming and we live, my dear friends, I'll be back here tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Pacific, and around the world. And I'll be, uh, we'll have the regular standing between the, the living and the dead uh, memorial, very fitting for this Memorial Day weekend, memorial prayer and devotional service. And hopefully I can do that between 10 and 11 Central Time and then at 11 o'clock uh, Central Time, 12 o'clock Eastern. I'll be preaching the Just Jesus Evangelistic Sermon. We thank God for each and every one of you. And uh, I don't know how you do it, but we thank God for your showing up. Uh, this is, has been another, uh, well, I guess we're going to be now over 6,000 uh, people today, over the three events. And we thank God for you. And we give. God the glory. May as well tell it. Uh, that's just from the cameras before me, uh, not counting all the other platforms. And uh, we thank you for your prayers. So please continue to pray for me. Prayer truly is. Don't let anybody fool you. Yes, it's fine to receive a love offering and to give it some money to help and things like that. But don't let anybody fool you. Don't let any preacher fool you. The most important thing that you can receive from me or from anybody else is prayer to God for you. The most important thing that I can receive from you is prayer, not money. You. From you is prayer. Pray to God for me. That's the main thing. That's what I need. That's, that's the best thing you can do for me. That's the gold standard. Not money, prayer. And the best thing I can do for you is prayer. So let's not send any money to each other. And let's just pray for one another and see what God does for you. God bless you. I love you. Most, most importantly, God loves you. And we'll see you next week. Let's all stand for our closing prayer. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you so much for what you have done for what you are doing and for what you will do. It's so wonderful to be with the people of God. So wonderful to be with the people of God. Lord, their bodies are not here, but their spirits are here. They have filled this place up. And I'm so excited about what you've done in all of our lives.